everyone. I'm Claire Charles. I'm a software developer, a technical writer, and I love dogs. And I also love contributing to open source. And today I'm going to be talking to you about open source on the topic, getting started with open source, a roadmap for beginners. This is the outline of the talk. First, I'll be talking about what is open source. Next, I'll be talking about the step-to-step -step guide on how to make your first contribution to open source and the benefits of contributing to open source, then how to collaborate with open source project maintainers. So let's get started. What is open source? Open source is a software whose source code is made available for, for use where people can modify and share ideas freely because it is made accessible by the public. Let's just take open source as Twitter. Like on Twitter, you could, when you tweet something, other people get to comment and get to um, comment and like your post. That's people sharing ideas using Twitter. Moving on to the next thing. I just want to let you know that you could actually contribute to open source beyond code. You could contribute to open source by planning events for people. You could help plan other people's events. You could help arrange and organize their, um, their events. You could also help by designing. You could help people design logos for their projects and all the rest of them. You could also help by writing articles, helping them build their blog and help them write articles for their organization. You could also help you could also contribute to open source by mentoring, that's by teaching people, teaching others, newbies on how the organization works or how to code. Now we're gonna move on to the step-to-step -step guide on how to make your first contribution to open source. But before we get started, I would like to explain what GitHub is. GitHub is a web hosting sites where developers can store their projects and network with like-minded people. When we're talking about GitHub, we're talking about like a place where other people can actually share their open source, their projects, where people can share their project that other people can modify and access. When you're talking about GitHub, there are certain words that you need to know when on GitHub. For example, repository. A repository is a folder in which all the files and the version histories are stored. Pull request. The pull request is the way to make ask for changes made to the branch to be merged into another branch, which also has which also allows multiple users to see, discuss, and review work being done. A merge request. After a pull request has been approved, the commits will be pulled or merged from one branch to another and then deployed on the live site. Next is forking a repo. This is when you create a new project based off of another project which already exists. That is, for example, you have a project. Okay, no, you fork someone else's project. That is making the project yours in you, it's going to be in your name. Now that you know the words being used on GitHub, first you explore GitHub. Exploring GitHub, this is usually found on the navbar of your GitHub page. When you explore GitHub, there are so many repositories there which you could actually contribute to. On these so many repositories, when you finally found a particular project you'd like to contribute to, then you could you check for the following files. You check if the project has a license file. The license file is, is important in every GitHub project, every GitHub repository, because that shows that the organization is verified. You will also have a contributions.md. That's the guidelines on how you could make contributions to that project. You would also see the code of conduct to see what you should do and what is not allowed in that organization. You would also check for the when the last commit was made in that particular repository. Now that you've checked for all this, the next step is 
go into the issues folder on that particular repository. And that issues folder, you check for the following as well. You check when the last issue was created. You check how many issues are present in the repository. You'd also check um, how many issues are getting closed soon and how many people are taking on some of these issues. Now that you've possibly gone to the issues repository, the issues part of that repository, then you could search for the tag as a, for this following tag as a beginner. You check for the beginner friendly tag, you check for the beginners only, you check for first timers only and good first issue because this are good issue this issues with these tags are made mostly for beginners, all those who are getting started with open source contribution. Now, when you've seen an issue you'd like to contribute to, you would hence go to the um, issue and then comment that you'd like to take on the issue. Now, if commented that you want to take, the, take on the issue, if the issue is not being fixed by anybody, then the, the maintainers will assign you the issue. Else, you would want to pick up another issue. When you've picked up this other issue, you now fix it. You could fix it in two ways. You could fix it globally or you could fix it locally. Fixing it locally, you use this command, git clone space, the um, repository of the project. But fixing it globally, you could go to that particular file. That is, if you can fix it glo globally when you forked that repository. Now that you forked it, Fixing it globally is pick, clicking on any of the files which you would like to fix an issue on and making, you could edit that file. When you're done editing it, pushing it, if you're fixing it locally, you then push it back to GitHub with the regular git push commands. And when you're fixing it globally, you could then make a commit and then make a pull request. When your pull request has been, is being sent to the main repository, that's when your um, pull request is likely being able to get in merged. When your pull request is being merged, then you can go home and be happy and just celebrate because you just made your first contribution to open source. Now that you know this, how you could make your first contribution to open source, now I'm gonna tell you how you could benefit from open source contributions. Open source helps you gain recognition in the community and in the pair. When you contribute to an open source project, you gain recognition in the sense that people, all those who are in the community see you and know that, okay, yeah, you're a contributor in this community. So let's give her a follow or give him a follow. That helps you gain recognition. It could also help you improve on your existing skills. For example, your there's this JavaScript-based project, and you're, you know JavaScript to an extent. So there's an issue on the project. Then you um, raise a notice that you'd like to fix the issue. And then when fixing that issue, you would encounter another issue. That pushes you to research on how to fix the other issue. Contributing to open source also helps you gain better understanding of the software. When you contribute to open source projects, you know how the software works. For example, you contribute to Linux. You see how Linux works, you see how it's a prey, you see the backbone of Linux. Contributing to open source makes help you make the world a better place. How does it how do you make the world a better place by contributing to open source? For example, Google has an error. That error is affecting everybody, like everybody who uses Google. So you notice this error and probably fix it or you um, give ideas on how people could, on how the Google developers could fix this issue. You just made the world a better place because they end up fixing the issue and people don't get to bother much about that issue again. Open source helps you build your resume. This helps you gain experience. That is, you could contribute to others during code, you could read code which has been written by others, and you could fix bugs in code which has also been written by others. Moving on to, to the next point, that is how you could collaborate with open source project maintainers. 
You can collaborate with open source maintainers by being active in the community channel, like Slack, Discord, Discourse, or any other chat channel of the community. You could also collaborate with open source maintainers by attending the community meetups. That's by attending their meetings on Zoom or on Google Meets or any other platform which they will be organizing meetups. When you've attended some of these meetups, you could you would know if there are issues on the project. If no issues are mentioned during the meetup, then if you notice any issue in the project, you could most likely create an issue. You could also ask for help from the maintainers. That is, if you don't know how to fix an issue, you could ask for help if you're having difficulties when fixing a particular issue. Thank you so much for listening to this talk. I hope you enjoyed it. You could reach out to me at on Twitter at ClareMe101 or on GitHub at ClareMe. Thank you.